it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And today I want to talk about focus. Uh, this is something that I've alluded to in other screencasts uh, in the context of working with multiple splits in a window. So to frame the discussion, I'm just going to open up some splits. Uh, let's look for another file like I normally need. That one. So uh, just for the purposes of illustration here, I have two splits. You can see that as I move up and down between them, the window which is focused is obvious because the background changes color and the status line changes. So uh, I think I'm going to open just one more file just to make it even more obvious. Um, so now I have three splits. And as I move around with the cursor keys, you can see that, uh, oops, you can see that uh, the, fo the focus appears to change. So let's look at the mechanism by which this is actually happening. Um, the reason why I open these two files is because they contain the mechanism while it's actually why it is actually happening. Uh, so you'll notice here in my plugin auto commands file, which I'll leave a link to in the notes um, because it's up in my dot files. I have these auto commands set up, um, and as the comment here indicates, when we gain or lose focus in a particular pane, we're going to run some stuff that makes it obvious that something is either blurred or focused. Um, and particularly we're going to be using this so-called color column feature which you can learn all about in the help. Uh, but basically the idea of color column is that you can tell it to draw a, a line somewhere in the UI at a certain column number. Um, and for example, in this view that I currently have open, so help view, the text width is 78. So at the end of the line here, uh, at column 78, uh, let's see if I can actually get out that far. Yeah, in column 78, uh, it starts drawing a line. Um, but you'll notice that everything to the right of column 78 is also dark uh, or bright in this case. And um, that's because you can actually color multiple columns. So what's actually happening here in this view that I'm, I have focused right now is that column 78 and above are all set to display the color column. And if I show you what color column looks like in this view, you'll see that it is a bunch of numbers uh, going all the way up to somewhere over 200. Uh, I empirically determined the limit of this. Uh, it's 255, I think. Uh, so if I make the font small enough, you will see that eventually the color column effect stops uh, because Vim can't draw too many color column lines at once. So let's go back to the size we were before approximately. So effectively, we're, we're abusing this color column feature to blank out everything to the right of the text width. Um, and if I move, if I close this buffer and go, go up here again, you'll notice that when a buffer is not focused, we actually draw color column from column zero onwards. So uh, you can see that here on line 17 of this buffer, that when we start editing a particular buffer, we're gonna begin at the current text width. And we're gonna add these like plus zero to 255 numbers and try to draw all those with color column. And when we leave, we're gonna basically start at the leftmost column in the buffer and draw them all in the color column color. So that is probably the biggest thing that I do to make it obvious when I'm in one window or another. But you can see that I do a couple of other things uh, elsewhere. Uh, I have this focus status line and blur status line. Uh, functions that are defined. And so we'll look at those now. You can see blur status line here. This function basically updates the status line to be a little bit more simple. So I'm gonna split this again. You'll notice in the blurred version of the status line, there's no red here. There's no buffer number. Uh, it's italicized to make it look a little different. There's no bolding of the file name and there's no metadata over on the right. If you, if you compare that to the focused status line, it's got a bunch more stuff going on. Um, so I'm just going to go through this a little bit here. Uh, this is just basic Vim status line configuration, which you can learn about by looking up status line and help. If I could type status line, there we go. So this is described in, in great detail here, all of the different things you can use to specify what appears in the status line. But effectively, yeah, in the blurred case, we're just mostly showing space and the file name and pretty much nothing else. Uh, in the focus case, you'll see here that we revert to our global status line setting, which is considerably more complicated, uh, which I'm going to show you now. 
So I've got that defined in this status line file, which again I'll link to in my notes under the screencast. You can see I'm doing a, a bunch of stuff here. Uh, obviously using the power line glyphs to make this little triangle appear on the left and also the right. Um, we're bolding the file name. We're italicizing the file type. If this were a read-only file, that would appear there as well, uh, which I think I can probably trigger by doing this. See there, they put the minus there to indicate that it wasn't modifiable anymore. Um, and all of this stuff, I'm not using a plugin to do this because I think that's kind of overkill. Uh, is done using the normal Vim status line configuration. I do have a couple of helper methods that I call that I've defined in other files. So if I go here to status line file, you see these extra functions that are defined um, for doing things like figuring out how much padding I should have in the gutter here in this red thing, because when I'm editing a very long file, the number of columns occupied to display nine line numbers is going to be more. And so I want this little red thing here to line up um, and be wider or narrower accordingly. Um, we have some stuff in here where I am computing a file prefix uh, such that I can render this part, the part that is not the file name, um, and abbreviate home to be tilled, um, so little things like that. Um, we override status line. I'm actually going to go back over here and get the status line file open again. Um, so you can see here, um, the reason why we, we're not using the built-in file type here is because I want the file type to be in lowercase. I don't want it to be uppercase like the default would be. Um, and similarly, we override the file encoding thing that you would get from Vim uh, to be lowercase. So just little little things like that. So um, there's a fair bit in here that you could dig through if you, if you cared. Um, probably the more gnarly stuff is the overriding of colors. Uh, so effectively, depending on the color scheme I'm running, I'm going to have to do things like italicize and boldface things um, or pluck a background or a foreground out of one of the color schemes for reuse, such as knowing that the triangle on the left here needs to be red foreground and the background needs to be whatever cover the color the rest of the status line is. So all of that massaging is done here in this update highlight function. So this is highly custom and it's not the kind of thing that I think I could readily extract into a plugin for other people to use. And also there are a zillion other uh, status line configuration plugins in existence. Uh, but I do think that tailoring your status line is something you should do. Um, and so I would encourage you to probably roll your own like I've done um, and feel free to look through my dot files and steal bits and pieces. Uh, but you can do a lot just with standard Vim functions and without having to pull down any kind of fancy functionality. Um, the only final thing that I would note uh, before concluding is that um, the use of the power line glyphs in, in the font there, the triangles, um, I'm not using a patched font. I'm using Adobe's source code pro font. Um, the nice thing about that is it already has the glyphs out of the box. So you don't have to do any janky font patching in order to have this work. So that's it for now. Thanks for listening.